you are not stuck, you are not broken, and you're not too far gone. <laughs> Even if you might feel that way, your body is incredibly capable of healing. Hi there, can I invite you to imagine something with me? Picture your blood vessels as a beautiful river, actually a system of rivers winding through your body like a network of streams nourishing a lush, thriving forest. These rivers carry life, oxygen, nutrients, everything your cells need to function, especially your brain. When they're flowing smoothly, you feel clear, energized, and grounded, fully alive. But what happens when those riverbanks start to break down, when the water slows, becomes murky, or gets blocked altogether? the whole ecosystem of your body suffers. Things start to wither. That's what happens inside our bodies when the endothelium, the delicate inner lining of our blood vessels, gets damaged. It's just one cell layer thick, but it's vital to our functioning. When it's inflamed or dysfunctional, blood flow gets restricted and oxygen delivery slows down. And over time, the brain begins to struggle. That's where so many of our chronic degenerative diseases begin. And for me, vascular disease isn't just a theory. It's very personal. My lovely grandmother she was one of the strongest and most stubborn women I've ever known. I can still picture her bustling around the kitchen and tending to her garden and taking care of the whole family. She had such vitality and dignity. And when I was a young girl, all of a sudden, um, everything changed overnight. She had a stroke, and I remember visiting her in the hospital she couldn't talk. She, could, she couldn't walk on her own. She needed help even with the most basic tasks. And I watched that, that inner light dim in her eyes. And to be honest, something, something broke inside my little girl's heart uh, when I was just 12 years old. And that experience is one of the reasons I became the kind of doctor I am today one who aims to not just treat illness, but to prevent disease, prevent suffering, the kind like my grandma that robbed her of her independence, her, her joy, her identity. And so that's why I'm so passionate about talking about brain health and vascular health, because we have so much more control or influence than we think we do with our brain health, our daily choices, how we eat, how we move, how we rest, how we pray and connect with others can shape our health and our future in really powerful ways. And one of the most important and under-recognized systems of the body that we need to care for is this inner lining of our blood vessels the endothelium. And it may be tiny, but it's so, so powerful. It lines every vessel in the body, which there's actually 60,000 miles of blood vessels in our body that can go around the earth two times. They help to regulate blood pressure, um, decrease inflammation, prevent clotting, the immune responses. That lining is like the air traffic controller for our circulation. It's constantly adapting and responding to our lifestyle, our environment, and even our emotional state. When the endothelium is healthy, your brain gets what it needs, 
a steady flow of oxygen and nourishment. And when it's not, things can start to unravel. And researchers are finding that endothelial dysfunction in the lining of the arteries is a common thread in not only heart disease, but Alzheimer's disease, strokes, insulin resistance, and even cancer. But here's some good news. It is never too late to care for your endothelium. It actually responds quickly to lifestyle changes. And I'm going to share a few of my go-tos with you. Number one is movement. A simple, brisk walk, 30 minutes a day, makes a huge difference in your vascular health. I like to say that motion is like lubrication for our vasculature, for our arteries. It boosts nitric oxide. It will decrease inflammation and keep your blood vessels, uh, the walls of them, very supple. And um, you just want to find something that feels enjoyable and that you want to do and is doable for you. Number two is food. Processed food, junk food, that's like dumping trash in our river of life. (laughs) It damages the vessel walls and promotes plaque formation. But the colorful, whole foods, fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds... (laughs) Uh, All of those um, tend to the lining of the arteries. I want you to think about wild blueberries, leafy greens, garlic, pomegranate, extra virgin olive oil, green tea. These are the foods that are rich in polyphenols and antioxidants that help to protect and restore our arteries. Number three is time-restricted eating. Even a 12 to 14-hour overnight fast a simple reset for your blood vessels. It gives them time to repair. So just, you know, finish eating at 7 p.m. after dinner and push your breakfast till 9 a.m. That simple. Number four is sleep. We know from research that even a few hours of sleep deprivation a night uh, for like a week can damage the lining of our endothelium. So Aim for that seven to nine hours of sleep, and you'll be tending to your vasculature as well. I want to mention mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Chronic stress doesn't just make us feel overwhelmed. It actually wears down the lining of our blood vessels through high cortisol, which can suppress nitric oxide release, and it can stiffen up the arteries increase inflammation. But healing can come from something simple like being still, deep breathing, laughter, connection, gratitude, finding meaning and purpose, and and through prayer. These aren't just little extras. They're actually powerful medicine for our nervous system and the blood vessels. So you can try the simple Breathing technique, uh, you breathe in for four seconds, pause for four seconds, and then exhale for six seconds. Do this three to five minutes a day, and it's powerful, free, highly effective medicine. In my medical practice, I like to use advanced tools to measure vascular health. We do uh, advanced lipid testing, check for inflammatory markers. We do biologic age testing and can even help design a supplement regimen along with a lifestyle medicine plan to help protect the lining of the endothelium. I like to tell my patients that no supplement can outshine consistent daily habits. So if you smoke or do anything else that is really damaging, You can take all the supplements you want and you're still not going to make headway. So uh, I say this with deep compassion and grace that if you're a smoker, I urge you to quit. It's one of the most damaging things that you can do to your blood vessels. It's never too late. You can start reversing damage even when you give up your first cigarette. So I want to leave you with this. You are not stuck. You are not broken. And you're not too far gone. (laughs) 
even if you might feel that way, your body is incredibly capable of healing. And from a spiritual perspective, this is about stewardship. Our bodies are temples. We've been entrusted with this vessel of life, and we're called to care for it. Not out of fear, but out of love, out of compassion, out of a desire to serve and fulfill our purpose in life. I want to fully show up for my loved ones, my patients, my community, uh, and I know that you do too. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be here watching this. <laughs> so let's not wait for a crisis to make the changes that we need. Let's be proactive. Let's choose to nourish our river of life. So thank you for spending this time with me today, and thank you for showing up for yourself and being an advocate for yourself. Until next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Rethink Aging, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone you love. For more episodes and highlights from the show, you can check out more videos right here and here. I also invite you to join the Rethink Aging community at caringforthebody.org, where you can find more resources on how to better protect your brain, strengthen your body, and live with purpose. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next episode.